Hello everyone and I hope you're doing really well today. Today we have the pleasure of reviewing or doing a buyer's guide for the FA18C module in DCS World. It's very important to notice that although this was released into earlier access in what June 2018, it now being August 2019, so it's 14 months old, but because of the complexity and just the way they've done it, it's still very heavily in early access at the time of doing this review it's missing lots of weapons sensors and miscellaneous features so we're going to go ahead with the review we're going to review it exactly as it is today in august 2019 and in a year two years whenever they finish it we'll just do a new review at that point the way we're going to do the review to keep it uniform and comparable to the other dcs module reviews that we do we will use the following categories one capability in terms of weapons sensors nav and maybe some misc two its kinetic performance as in dcs as compared to the other aircraft three its visual effects inside the cockpit and outside the cockpit we will be rating that one to five one being crap five being excellent and then if you want to go and compare that to other aircraft then i will link a database our main gr database where we've got all of the different aircraft ratings in there i'll link that in the video description and as well as just my review you'll also have scores from the other gr members there that you can compare to next sound effects inside the cockpit and exterior again rated one to five next interactivity and detail and that is how interactive is the cockpit how many buttons can i press are they satisfying to press do those buttons do what they're supposed to do in the real plane how much detail is there behind those systems and so on next flight model not necessarily how realistic it is to the real aircraft that is just something we expect as a default position but more importantly for us how immersive is the flight model how much does it make us feel like we're in a real fa18c can we feel the weight of the plane, the mass of the plane, the various physics of the plane? Is there anything in that flight model that we don't think is right, that just feels wrong for some reason? And that's going to be rated 1 to 5 as well. Next is difficulty, and that is how difficult is it to buy this module, learn to fly it, learn the various systems, learn the various weapons. And 1 will be easy, that will be an A10A, Flaming Cliffs. 5 will be super difficult, an A10C, requires lots of manual studying and practicing and whatnot. And finally, history. Now this is going to be a bit of a difficult one to do because we are in such early access. But people who are spending their money on this aircraft, lots of money, deserve to know what the history has been like. How it has it been buggy, has it been problematic and so on and so forth. So let's get straight to it. Okay, we're in the Hornet cockpit now. First of all, we're going to look at capabilities. So before we go into look at the weapons, then we've got to say that this aircraft, the FA-18C in DCS, is the king of capability and DC in DCS, and it probably always will be. There's just so much stuff it can do. It can do close air support. It can do precision ground attack. It can do fast strike ground attack. It can do SEAD, that's killing um, hostile radar guarded SAMs. It can do short range air to air. It can do medium range air to air. It can do air to air refueling. It can do carry operations. It can work at night. And I don't know, that's just off the top of my head. And it can do all of those things excellently. And that's, that's just the annoying thing about it. It is just so good. Now, for me, because of that, because it can do everything beautifully, I don't like it. But. That said, remember that I'm lucky enough to have all the modules in DCS, so I can go and fly anything I want. But most of you guys can only have one, two, maybe three modules. A plane that can do everything excellently is a bonus, a really good thing. So let's get into the weapons. Now, like I said, it's early access. Not all the weapons are here, but there are so many weapons already. It's almost beggar's belief. If we look at the outer pylons, one and nine, we've got air to air. Let me get that right. It's got a Sidewinder Lima, mic, and x-ray later in the alphabet the more modern they are so the mic would be something that uh, an f-15c would have or a tomcat would have or a harrier the x is super modern version of the sidewinder thrust vectoring with really high off bore capability shooting so i can shoot a targets off bore as far as you know right up like that and um, that makes it absolutely amazing in a dogfight in terms of weaponry in a dogfight this aircraft is the best in dcs and we've got a training missile there we've also got pods uh, it's just kind of like the uh sidewinder fake thing there uh notes in this aircraft we can also remove pylons although at the moment it isn't modeled in terms of drag for pylons but it probably will be 
Pylon 2 and here we start cooking on gas, air to air. We've got the AMRAM, the AIM-120B and C models, the C being wing clipped and slightly longer range but less maneuverable. They are medium range, air to air, radar guided, FOX-3 fully active missiles and extremely potent. As well as that we have FOX-1 capability of Mike, Foxtrot and Mike Hotel which is the top Sparrow, that is semi-active radar homing FOX-1 type missile. We can also have the sidewinders again or we can have mounts of two everything except the sparrows and what you'll find in this plane it can carry more air-to-air -air missiles i think than any other aircraft in dcs bombs again an absolute pethora more types of bombs than, than i think a uh, ground attack or close air support a10c which is amazing but the cbu 99 which is a cluster munition bomb with variable height fusing it is a non-guided variant with non-guided sub munitions of a GBU-10, 12 and 16, these are laser guided bombs and we can use our own targeting pods to laser for them or we can use a third party JTAC or aircraft laser. GBU-12, I think that's a 500 pounder, the 16 is a 1000 pounder and the 10 is a 2000 pounder. Then we've got these, the GBU-38 and the 31 variants. These are JDAMs, they are joint INS slash GPS guided bombs, they're far and forget, you don't need a laser, you just program in the coordinates where you want to drop them or find them on your teapot, drop them and then run away, and as well as that you can toss them, I managed to toss them up to 35 miles, and they're pretty much in unstoppable. You've got 500 pound flavour there, and I think from memory they are 2000 pound 31, correct me if I'm wrong please, and then the uh, infrastructure version there. We've got the Mark 20, which is a cluster bomb similar to the C uh, CBU 99. We've got a unguided slick bomb, 500 pound Mark 82, the same but a retarded or high drag snake eye. The, if I can see that, I think that's an ATG Y down there, which is uh, another type of high drag Mark 82. Got the Mark 83, which is a slick dumb 1000 pounder, Mark 84 slick dumb 2000 pounder. And you can see here we can have various mounts here that allow us to carry multiples of some of those weapons, including six times BDU training bombs, and uh, you've got a couple of JDAMs there, which is pretty awesome. Missiles, and although it's not complete, we've already got the AGM 154A and C, or two of each on the pylons. They are the JSAOs, the joint standoff weapons. They are guided, unpowered glide bombs. A bit like the JDAMs, you type in the coordinates or get it from your teapot or whatever. You send them on their way. You can toss them up to 70 miles, we found. Seven zero miles. And they and then you can turn away and they will guide themselves to target. Warheads can be cluster or, you know, bunker busting or explosive. AGM 88C. This is the harm. This is a high kinetic anti-radiation missile. You can use it up to about 80 miles in absolutely favorable conditions to shoot down various types of radar, including SAM radars. Extremely good weapon, and you can have, I believe, up to four of them. And then we've got the Mavericks, because we could use Mavericks. We've got the Echo and the Foxtrot. The Echo is a laser-guided version, so we can laze for that with our T-Pod or use third-party lays. The Foxtrot, I believe, is the Navy version. Forgive me, I forget if it's IR or optical. From memory, I think it's IR-guided and it can be used against ships or generic ground targets. So we're not finished yet, we have already, already can have more weapons than just about any other aircraft. Rockets, we can have, whoops, we can have the Lao 10 launcher with four times high caliber, high powered Zuni rockets, or the Lao 61 launcher, or the Lao 68 launcher. This has 19 2.75 inch rockets with a high explosive warhead. This has seven times 2.75 inch rockets with a high explosive warhead, or uh, a different type of high explosive warhead or we can have adapters that allow us to take two pods per pylon. So that was just two pylons so far. Number three, we can have all of the radar homing missiles that we've talked about, including two times AMRAMs per pylon. Bombs, I believe that's the same as the pylon we've just looked at, so a plethora of bombs there. Fuel tanks, 330 gallon fuel tank, the same missiles as we saw before, the same rockets as we saw before. Pylon four, air to air, one times AMRAM of either flavor or one times Sparrow of either flavor. Center pylon. Bombs. Either of the clusters, any of these uh, unguided bombs, but no guided bombs. Or 330 gallon tank, or if I can get it there, our lightning targeting pod, which has just been introduced. I haven't even had a chance to have a look at it yet, but that's there and usable to a certain state now. And then we've got the other pylons which are repeated down there obviously. And even a smoke pod. 
So an absolutely amazing arsenal. And like I keep saying, it's not even finished. We haven't got the harpoons. We haven't got the anti-ship ability. It will do. And when we get those harpoons, it will be an amazing anti-ship weapon. Because harpoons are amazing weapons. And a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not even going to go into in this. And finally, in the upper nose, it has the obligatory uh, kind of American Mike 61 Vulcan. Six barrel, 20 mil Gatling gun, extremely effective for air to air and actually extremely effective for air to ground. For that type of ammo, we can take tracers, default or no tracers. In terms of how those weapons are deployed, we've got a, a really good attack radar here. If we can just get into it here, we've got loads of functionality and there's still a lot of functionality to be added, like track while scan feature. And this is going to allow us to search for, uh, acquire, and fire on targets with our radar guided missiles our aim sevens on our aim 120s we can do that in a beyond visual range fashion you know kind of above 10 miles or we can do it in a acm fashion within 10 miles with the various search options roughly comparable with the other contemporary fighters f15 flanker and whatnot while we're talking about acm we have a head mounted display that we have where we can actually point our head about in fact let me just helmet mounted display sorry where we can actually see wherever we look like this our basic HUD which is an amazing thing to have none of the other aircraft have that ability and we do have the uh, ability to actually lock aircraft up if there was an aircraft like there like up here off foresight I could lock that aircraft up with my sidewinder or whatever and fire at him here that feature is in, Su in the Sukhoi and the MiG-29 but nothing else has this ability which is uh, really top of the range in terms of our IR guided missile, we can use our HUD traditionally to maneuver aircraft into our HUD and allow it to search for a heat signal that way just using the missile or we can get a radar lock on the hostile and we can slave the sensor on our sidewinder to wherever that radar lock is, off Borso up here for instance and lock it up that way. There's various different ways we can use our IR guided missiles including the helmet mounted display. In terms of how we deploy our air to ground weapons, that is, I mean, it's a complicated question. And we'll, we'll go through the DDIs, the, these multifunctional displays, in a bit. But there are lots of options in there allowed to set up and use our various air to ground weapons, including, as ever, the HUD here. And the HUD in this aircraft is excellent, well displayed, includes pretty much everything you will ever need to see for the correct mode that you want it in navigation beyond visual range acm whatever in terms of sensors we have a good modern rwr which allows us a good amount of situational awareness as to where hostile ground and air radars are what kind of threat they are it is a threat based system rather than a signal strength based system as well as missiles for situational awareness and missile evasion the display down here is just a backup we turn it on I'll show you that we can apply it to a HUD as well there's no radars out there but you can take my word oh there is that there's an unknown ship there so it tells us our information there now based on but not limited to the RWR we have a situational awareness change which is a real game changer the F-14 has a type of situational awareness page but it's simply not as comprehensive and modern and useful as this one here I went to menu I went to situation and um, the various function screens we have here can be put up on any of these three screens here but i've got my own way of working this would be a typical situational awareness page we can have a map on or off we've got it's very complex i've got a 90 minute video just introducing you to the situational awareness page it takes input from our rwr and our attack radar and other party sources like fighters in our group awaxes or aircraft carriers and it shows you where various entities friendly or foe are in the battle zone and allows us to keep a track of their coalition etc so a hugely potent weapon just in that uh, just in that system that SA system brings us on to our next thing which is our data link we have a modern data link in this more modern than the F-14B allows us like I said to hook up to other fighters in our group at the same time as hooking up to other donors like aircraft outside our group like uh, uh, E3 Sentry, AWACS aircraft, like aircraft carriers and so on. I think it's the Link 16 system from memory but I stand to be corrected. Got uh, a modern ECM, I don't think it's working at the moment in, in the, it just hasn't been implemented yet but it will be in there. We've got a comprehensive and intelligent dispenser or, or countermeasures suite, not fully developed, it's partially in there. 
in terms of navigation we've got, got a good modern INS based tactical navigation system waypoint based easy to use also easy to view we can for instance go to our HSI here we can see this we can manipulate this we can show our waypoints in here we can edit our waypoints we can do pretty much anything we want to do with navigation in there as well as that as an auxiliary we have a TACAN tactical air navigation that allows us to navigate independent of INS to moving home bases like aircraft carriers or static home bases like uh, fields like this that are TACAN capable as well as that we have full ICLS for a carrier so we have all weather landing capability in a carrier as well as that we have ADF which allows us to home into ADF beacons VOR stations uh, usually positioned on static air bases as well as that we have FM homing ability to home into for instance troops in the ground for close air support can send out uh, temporary radio signals that we can home into so its navigation is pretty much second to none maybe just to the A10Z but it's really an amazing modern suite if we uh, just have a quick scan around the options here here's the attack radar I said it's an air-to-air -air radar it's also an air-to-surface radar now we don't have implementation of, the, of that yet but that is something that's going to be coming so we're going to have surface scan as well for looking for ships and possibly uh, over terrain as well the functionality for the air-to-air -air radar is uh, second to none and pretty easy to use we have a situation awareness that we've already talked about we have our electronic warfare that we've already talked about this is like the rwr but it's an integrated system it integrates with for instance the countermeasure systems and other things so very modern dynamic from that respect target data screens hard repeater attack radar stores page we've got no stores in here but if we want to manage our stores we can set our stores up and a lot of work regarding deploying those weapons is going to be from the stores page here i mean i could literally do a three hour video just talking about the stores page we can select a store we can go into it we can set it up we can talk uh, adjust the fuses we can adjust how it's going to fire its ingress modes literally pages on pages of stuff very similar to the a10c but i'm going to resist the urge to do that but another full page here f pass page it talks about our fuel burns and allows us to plot courses based on our maximum efficiencies fuel comprehensive fuel analysis system an artificial adi uh, sorry digital adi digital comprehensive plenty of options on the hsi as you can see really complex flight control systems we can look at including bit tests engine data checklists there's the built-in test sorry mids i don't even know what mids is i'm sure it's something very oh, technical but stuff there and you know this is that was just a quick look round, and this is just at its you know kind of half built position you can start to get a feel of how much data there is in there and off all of those pages that you saw there is sub data and i haven't even looked at the lightning bod yet so really complex stuff they've got going on here or easy input i should say we'll probably cover this later we've got an upfront controller here that we can use also got two modern radios com1 and com2 really good radios easy to use digital display inputs and whatnot got day and night operations i don't know if it's going to let me yep there you go you can see you got your uh, night vision goggles and whatnot got a comprehensive autopilot suite different types of autopilot you can use pretty much everything you'll ever need to use there needless to say it's naval aircraft so we can operate from carriers in case i forget to mention later when we're looking at the flight model it's got excellent physics in terms of um, interacting with carriers i mean it's been a hard road getting there obviously have been bugs in the past but everything's pretty much sorted out as far as i'm aware it's interaction in terms of taking off landing on the carrier excellent really difficult nicely challenging to do the uh, to do the landings and so on so that's as far as we'll go with capability i know we can talk all day about this there's so much stuff in there but uh, we can't make the video too long so next we're going to go into visual effects first we'll do inside the cockpit and this is really this is where dcs is at the moment it's top of the range along with the tomcat now best thing is i just basically look around the cockpit slowly i could spend five minutes just looking at everything 
and you guys can see for yourself because an old man with old eyes like me it's no good trying to tell you young whippersnappers what looks good and what doesn't bucket loads of detail in here put some lighting on actually I like flying this plane in the daytime because the lighting is just so freaking cool in here Shadows look great. There's textures, there's buttons, everything's good. High detail. Top of the range. So it's, it's a clear 5 out of 5 inside. I'm sure I don't need to prove that to you anymore. Let's go and have a look outside. That's a really easy one to rate, and I'm sure you'd agree with me, everyone watching, that that is as good as it gets. It's, you know, probably as good, maybe not quite as good as the Tonga, but it's an easy 5 out of 5 for inside and outside, nice and easy to rate. Next, we're going to look at the sound effects, internal and outside. Now, I've done quite a lot of these reviews now, and I've got a good idea what we want out of the sound engine, or what we need out of a sound engine. So I'm just going to go through the usual structure of testing this out. So first of all, inside the cockpit, I want to rev the engines up and I want to hear their whole rev range. I, I can't be looking down here or wherever the where the RPM is. I want to hear it uh, with my ears. And I want to hear what those afterburners come on. That's probably the only fault we're going to find in the in the Hornet today is that you can't hear the afterburners very well. But let's, let's have a listen. I 
I think that kind of whooshy sound, I think that was the afterburners. The brakes are so crap in this that it's very hard to actually tell. Yeah, I think that, that kind of, I don't know how to really make that sound, that kind of sound. I think that's the afterburner. Sounds a bit weird to me, but that's just how it is. Um, I think rather than kind of, um, I think they've sacrificed the gaminess of the uh, inside cockpit sounds to try and create the ultimate reality. I think it's, they're trying to make it sound exactly as it does in the real F-18. And I'm on board with that, that's okay. Personally, I prefer the more kind of gamey F-15 type um, inside sound where I can really hear what the engines are doing. But as long as I've got some input on what those engines are doing, and I could just about hear them, I could just about get away with it. I don't think it's perfect, at least what I want, but um, generally it's okay. And the, the, the overall sound of the APU, whatever that sound is, is a little bit too loud in here for me. Uh, I'd love it if that was toned down a bit, but again, I think they've done it for realism. I think they've probably sampled what it really sounds like, and you've got that, that sound is uh, a lot louder than the actual engines. And it's perfect. It, the outside of this F-18, they've actually got it perfect. And I'm a really, I'm a sound man. Let me just go inside. I'm a sound guy. I make these videos where I used to when I used to get time. Uh, half of the work was just getting the sounds right. And the one aircraft, well, one of the aircraft, I never had to edit the, the volumes of anything or anything was the F-18. Outside, it just sounds perfect. The afterburners sound perfect to mill power, which sounds perfect to idle. Everything's there. There's no jumpiness. There's no weirdness. It just sounds absolutely spot on to me so they've done a great job so in summary of these tests it's a little loud that the ambient sounds a little loud and the engine sounds a little bit quiet in here otherwise it's okay in here outside it's pretty much perfect next we need to get in the air to carry on with the structure of tests so the next thing is i want to hear ground rumble i've got to hear ground rumble a real pilot can feel the feel those wheels on the ground in his butt i can't do that i need to have the ground rumble and i think i can hear it can you hear that some planes are missing that and it's something we do need to have. So what we should find is that rumbly noise disappears when we take off. And we're up. And it's disappeared. Perfect. So that's that. That's another uh, box tick there for the F-18. The next thing I want to hear is... Yo, oh, not her all the time. She's a pain in the butt. Uh, next thing I want to hear is wind noise, linear wind noise. It's very important, that, and a lot of uh, planes have got this wrong. The F-14 is a great example. Everyone thinks it's wonderful and whatnot, but it's missing some really obvious stuff, probably just because it hasn't been developed yet. Uh, wind noise is important. I want to know how fast I'm going. I don't want to have to look at that there. I don't want to have to look at that, wherever the speedo is down there somewhere. I want to know how fast I'm going by how noisy the wind is. I want that as a basic instinct, and I want that coming from the sound engine. So let's speed up and see if we can get the uh, linear sound engine going. I want it to be, I want to have to shout at you at 600 knots, or 700 knots. And you can already hear it, can you hear the wind going? So it's got it in spades, it's perfect, really, and it doesn't sound fake, it sounds really, really good. So great, great stuff there. Next thing is maneuvering sounds. I want to be able to hear when I'm doing high G, I want to be able to hear when I'm doing high alpha. I do not want to have to look at my gauges. I want the sound engine to tell me, and a good sound engine, sound engine will tell me exactly that. Again, a real pilot doesn't have to look at his gauges for this, he can feel it through his backside, but we can't. We have to rely on the sound engine. So first of all, let's go for high G, low alpha. Speed that up, get some speed up. And you can hear him struggling to breathe, albeit it's a bit quiet, isn't it? You can hear it, but over that, the, over the kind of ambient sound of the cockpit, it's hard to hear 
one complaint I've got. Next is high alpha. I want, when the alpha is going high and the wings are starting to struggle and the airframe is under stress, I, w I need to be able to hear that. It's what I need to be able to hear in a dogfight. So let's get some high alpha work done. Just have to slow down a bit. And you can hear it. You hear that? I'm only at 9 degrees alpha there. 10 degrees alpha and you can already hear it a lot. Uh, I can't remember how to disable the fly-by-wire in this, so we've got, we're, we're nannied by a really overly cautious fly-by-wire at the moment. So I can't get that alpha up at all at the moment, but you can hear it pretty well. Even at 10 degrees alpha. And I wish other planes like this would be like this in DCS. So many others have not got the sound right for the Alpha. Um, I think it was the F-14 was crap. I think it was the F-5. I've, I've done a whole list of other reviews. Um, you'll have to go and see them. In this one, it's exactly as it should be. That is perfect. It gives me a warning from 10 degrees upwards that I'm pulling too much Alpha. Hear that? Big Alpha. Excellent graphics with it as well. There's kind of Verks trails going back. As well as that, you get compression, uh, you get condensation clouds in the low pressure zone. Okay, um, that's that. We're kind of we're, we're basically falling out of the sky at the moment, kind of 45 degrees alpha. So that means the aircraft is actually going down at kind of that angle like that. Uh, so the so the alpha is huge, even though we're only going 80 knots. You hear those wings buffeting and uh, vibrating. Um, right, just trying to think what we test next. Next is uh, armament sounds. And uh, now I haven't bring armament up with me, but I've flown this plane plenty of times, and I'm pretty sure it's all there. See if I can get my gun going quickly. Uh, sounds fine. Sounds a better better than the um, Tomcat MiG uh, M61. And as well as that, the sounds, the kind of normal DCS sounds are there for the weapons release. Remember, we can't feel, we're virtual pilots, we can't feel those weapons releasing from the lugs where a real pilot can. So we need to feel, hear that. We need to hear the bomb, the doom of the bomb release because we can't feel it through our pants. Uh, and I'm pretty sure all that's there. So um, again, stop me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure from experience that's all there. So that's it. All in all, really, really good sound engine. I have some bug, uh, not bugs, I have some complaints as usual inside, the ambient sounds too much and I can't quite hear when we're on burners, look, let's see if we can hear when we're on burners again. There's a, there's a tiny sound change in the background, but it's so low as compared to the ambient sound in here that you just can't hear it and you need to hear it in a dogfight, you need to know when your afterburner's on and at the moment you can't. And that is a failure of the F-18. However realistic this is, we need to be able to, as virtual pilots, we can't feel that afterburner like a real pilot can. We need to have that in the sound engine. So that is a tiny bit that needs rebalancing. And I really wanted to give it five out of five because otherwise it's a beautiful sound engine, but it's missing that bit. There's no arguing about it. So we can't. And because the ambient is too high and the engines are too low, we have to give it four and a half out of five. It's the best we can give it. So four and a half out of five for sound as we're airborne at the moment I guess we'd better do flight model first and ah, it's a bit of a controversial one for me the reason is it's got a big fly-by-wire system I don't have direct control of this jet this stick isn't linked to those actual surfaces in any way it goes to a computer and the computer decides how it should move those flight surfaces and it really nannies me um, it really restricts what I can do and it does that for good reason it's trying to stop me blacking out it's trying to stop me crashing into the ground it's trying to stop me over alphering you know it's an unstable platform without that. Um, now personally I hate the way the F-18 feels because of that. I hate not having control of it. I really want con full control of what I can do, of, of you know, what I can do. But that's not a problem with the module so I can't actually mark it down. That is just how the real F-18 is. Uh, just because I don't like it doesn't mean that I can mark it down in that respect. But it's something you should be aware of. By no means is this flying by the seat of your pants, it's absolutely not. It's more like flying a calculator. It's like between me and the surfaces, there's a political control agent who's telling me what I should and should not be able to say on my YouTube videos. Very frustrating. 
Um, so although I can do cool things like this, and it's really easy to do, just like the Mirage, it's almost impossible for me to crash and kill myself. And you can see my control stick movements at the bottom. Look, you know, I should I should be dead in any other aircraft that didn't have a decent fly-by-wire -wire system doing this. But it's just saying, you know what? The aircraft, uh, the pilot's a retard. I'm not allowed to say that now, am I? The pilot's an idiot, and I'm just going to not let him do what he wants to do. Um, so that's just a thing. I don't like it, but um, you guys might like it, and I uh, can't mark it, mark it down for it. Now there is a way to dampen it, to, to undampen it a bit, to allow us to pull a bit more G. I can't even. It's so long since I've flown this, I can't even remember how. It's got a seven G limit on at the moment. You can remove that G limiter and pull higher G. In fact, let me go and do that. I think it's this button here. Let me have a go. I'm gonna take my G limiter off, and the G limiter now goes up to nine G or nine and a half G, whatever we're showing there. And I can black myself in that way. So I guess I do have that, but it's still, you know, it's not overriding the flight, uh, the the, uh, the flyby wire completely. It's just allowing me a bit more flexibility to pull those extra G. So that's my little complaint out of the way. It ha reacts with the ground uh, perfectly, no problems there. It skids about in wet or dry. The brakes are terrible, but I can't mark it down for that. Um, in terms of interaction with the carrier, it's pretty much perfect. Um, in high speed, high G, high alpha maneuvers. It's, again, it feels weird because I don't have direct control of it. It feels like I'm being cuddled, but that's just how it is. Otherwise, how does it actually feel to drive? Uh, it feels just right. It feels just right. It does feel like I've got the weight of the aircraft. It, it makes me believe that I am in a real F-18. Uh, there's no way I can quantify that to you. Just once you've flown enough air sims, you just know what feels right and you know what feels wrong. And uh, not all of these aircraft feel great in DCS, don't get me wrong. This one is good, it feels just about right for roughly the weight it is and the power it is and stuff like that. I can feel momentum when I'm trying to turn, I can feel the airplane trying to go the other way, feel the inertia, I feel it trying, you know, feel it try and fight me when I try and do certain things that it doesn't want me to do. Awesome spin characteristics, let's, have, let's go see if we can do one quickly. I've done this for a while, let's see how it goes. And up we go. <laughs> so cool. It's got a spin recovery system. I might not make it now. I did it so low. Uh, see if we can get out of it. You have to turn into the spin. Turn into the spin. Oh, I'm not going to make it. Oh dear. Yes! Super gap. Uh, so it's got really good physics when it turns to that. Reacts beautifully in terms of uh, environmental uh, anomalies, you know, high winds, pressure changes and altitude, con not contrails, uh, weight turbulence from other aircraft. It's really vicious, really good fun in terms of that respect. So flight mold, because there's nothing actually wrong with it. I have to give it a five out of five. It's beautiful. So next is interactivity in detail. And this is how can we interact to the cockpit with the switches and the knobs and stuff. How much of it works. How much of it does what it's supposed to do. What's the details like behind those systems and whatnot. And well, if you know anything about the FA-18C, you already know exactly where this is going. But we'll do go through the motions anyway. Uh, I don't really think there's many or any buttons you can't click. Uh, whatever that is, if that's even a button. Everything, oxygen, everything is done down here. All these systems, everything is modelled. I can't hear any clicking when I'm doing this, which is triggering me a bit. But other than that... Oh my god, what have I done? Oh! Oh, I've turned the oxygen off. Um, well, that's a new thing. Uh, maybe if I open the canopy. Oh dear. Uh, we'll pretend that didn't happen. Right, so let's carry on. Um, got a fuel probe that we can pop out. If I didn't mention, we can do air to air refueling. There he is. It's really easy to do in this aircraft because it just handles well. And the probe is at the front. All the lights, excellent. All this stuff, perfectly modeled. Everything around here modeled. Systems and subsystems and subsystems and subsystems and subsystems. It's just beyond anything I'm ever going to look into. It's, there's so much in there. It's a bit like the A10C, you know, really study level. Uh, everything, then the IFE, everything there is good. Uh, this isn't all finished yet, but uh, 
essentially everything that's there is is bang on the money. All the HUD controls, controls for this guy down here. I can't even remember what's down here. Everything's clickable here, even if it's not actually implemented yet. Here, got our um, we got our RWR. These instruments down here, fully manipulable, fully working. The lighting looks great on them. Uh, that, that that this doesn't work as far as I'm aware and it's still all modeled spin recovery I should have used that in the spin recovery but that will I've tested that and done a video about that and it all works and the wings come in and out and everything's modeled here everything's modeled here everything's modeled here even this rubbish what's all this stuff this bloody uh, K-Wave 58 that is a something to do with the IFF isn't it it doesn't do anything I don't think but it's all there I mean correct me if I'm wrong I'm, it's a long time since I studied this this aircraft my point is, it's all modelled there. I can't find anything that doesn't work. It's just so OCD friendly, this aircraft is. And the systems behind them, as you know, are just uh, second to none. It's, it's the new benchmark in DCS, basically. Kind of alongside, I guess, with the, uh, 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 the Tomcat to a certain extent. And once the graphics are upgraded, the A10C as well. It's an obvious and clear 5 out of 5. If I could go higher, I would. And bear in mind, I don't actually like this plane. This is a plane that I dislike for the reasons I said at the beginning. I don't, I don't enjoy flying it, but I'm still rating it 5 because, you know, facts are facts. Next, we're going to look at its ease of use. And uh, this is going to be a tough one to talk about, but it is a, is a very important one. So a lot of stories I hear from people that I've helped get into DCS. The first module they buy is the biggest, fanciest, flashiest sexiest one with all the missiles and all the guns they come in they buy the hornet and the hornet has brought loads of people into dcs which is great but a lot of those people haven't stuck with dcs which is bad and the reason is it's a bad aircraft to start with it's a difficult module to learn it's what we call a study level sim you've got to read through the i mean the manual isn't complete yet and what is it 300 and something pages i can't even remember anymore but it will be a big 500 page manual. There's so much to this aircraft. And that's not good nor bad, but it is difficult. Lots of people, like I said, come in and said, Cap, I bought the F-18, like you said. To be honest, I can't even take off in the bloody thing. And I've got bored and gone on and given up. And that's why we have the things like Flaming Cliffs 3 planes. They are starter planes. No, they're not sexy and people don't refute, don't like going into them because they're not big and sexy like this. But they will, if it wasn't for the FC3 planes, I wouldn't have kept with DCS. So that just... You know, that tells you a thing. So coming back to this Hornet, it's great that Eagle Dynamics market it at everyone and whatnot, but there are some people out there who won't enjoy it because they're not ready for it yet. Yes, when they've mastered their FC3, when they've mastered their uh, kind of starter high fidelity plane, like your F5, like your F86, like maybe your Mirage, then come onto this. For a lot of people, I'm not saying this is everyone, some people have got big brains and they can come in and just master this, and that's great, good for you. But a lot of people, like me, struggle. Now, to actually fly the thing is incredibly easy. Like I said, you can fly this thing with your little finger while you're drinking coffee and reading the newspaper. It's fly-by-wire system literally will not let you crash. But we're not just talking about flying. We're talking about using all of the different weapons, the navigation systems and stuff like that. And it does, although it's presented easily and it's very easy to click all these DDIs and stuff like that. I don't know why that's not working now, but ignore that. Of uh, course, I've done this, isn't it? clicking this stuff and reading about it and you know doing it is relatively easy to actually understand what all that means is incredibly complicated and I, I just I just find think a lot of people will get overwhelmed with this certainly as a first plane bear in mind that you're not just learning this aircraft but all of the background aeronautic and aviation stuff you have to learn if you're going to come into a sim like DCS world and get the most out of it if you want to come in fire some missiles don't get an F-18 get an F-15 or a flanker if you're a seasoned simmer then this is perfect for you in just about every way unless you like a challenge <laughs> and then get something else just kidding so difficulty because it is a little bit easier a little bit less study maybe than the a10c we're going to go four and a half out of five to get the most from it next we need to talk about the history for the last 14 months or so and oh this is going to give me a headache how do i say this without upsetting people uh well look, let's not beat around the bush it's in early access and on open beta especially it can be expected a lot of things don't work and a lot of the time things just don't work with this aircraft the radar hasn't worked for several times the missiles haven't worked the bombs haven't worked several times stuff's been changed and chopped and changed and chopped so many times i've got to do my cluster bomb move uh, video tutorial for the fourth time now because it's changed yet again which drives me nuts but that's just how they've decided to do it they brought it in at a very early stage last year and they're slowly adding bits and chopping it and taking it back and forward and back and forward and slowly progressing it until we get to the final product 
end of this year, next year, whatever it's going to be. So it's not been the easiest ride for the users of space, especially on open beta, and a lot of you do flow on open beta like me. That said, things in the Tom, uh, sorry, things in the Hornet are fixed very quickly. They're usually patched a few days. If there's a major problem in there, they're usually patched a few days after the open beta release. So they are on top of it. So with that in mind, it's up to you. You can buy it now, and we're going to continue like this for the months until it's finished. Things won't work. There'll be glitches. There'll be patches, stuff like that. Or you can wait until it's finished, in which case I'm sure it'll be an excellent, uh, you know, in terms of reliability. You can just feel when a module is going to be like that and you can feel when a module is going to be trouble. So I'm going to put that back in your court for now. now as promised, we're going to go through the kinetic data and you will be pleasantly surprised. Uh, the peak sustained turn rate at 50% gas ISA conditions at low level. The F18C is the best at a peak of 420 KTAS IAS. At a peak 420 KTAS, uh, 22 degrees per second sustained. So it's the best. I don't know if it's that good in real life. You guys will have to tell me. But in DCS, it's the best sustained turn rate fighter. Maybe that will change when the F-16 comes out. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Instant altitude, pretty weak at 81,000 feet. Not that that's really important. Max service ceiling is just below average at 61,000 feet, where a flanker is 72,000 feet. Maximum speed at optimal altitude is very low and we know that from history because it doesn't have the uh, inlet uh, preconditioning ramps and whatnot. So it is limited to Mach 1.81 in, in level flight and Mach 1.86 local in a dive. And bear in mind that some of these are inaccurate. Some of the FC3 flight models here are not particularly accurate. As we know, these here are the high fidelity mod modules. Low speed altitude, it is, where is it? Can you see it anywhere? There it is, mm, just below average again, Mach 1.16. Again, it's just not that powerful and relatively draggy. Acceleration, this is low altitude, 300 to 650 KTAS. It is, if you can see it, where is it? Wow, it's up here. Uh, I have no idea why it's so good, because power to weight ratio, although it's, you know, it's pretty decent, but it's, you know, less than some of these, so... I'm surprised, but okay, fair enough, there it is. Exactly the same, but Angel's 15 ASL, if you can find it. F18, there, right in the middle, 26.43 seconds. Climb rate from a QRA standstill. If you can see it, it's good. Above average at one minute and two seconds, so that's, uh, that's actually really impressive. Uh, same thing, but from 600 KTAS on the deck, if you can see it, very good. 26.4 seconds, it's very impressive. So Kinetic, it's one of the best, probably just behind the F-15 and the MiG-29 in general, but best turn fighter. As a summary, it's all thing to all men or women. It does everything and it does everything extremely well. It's not easy to master all the systems. It's quite hard and takes a lot of learning. If you like that, it's definitely the plan for you. I certainly don't find it as fun as something like an F-5 or a Huey or something that's bare bones flying by the seat of your pants, but a lot of you don't want that. A lot of you want screens and you know and um, smartphones and things like that to look at so that's your choice that's what you get with this module and in every other way sound i know there's a few glitches we found visuals everything like that it's just uh, top notch right at the peak of dcs at the moment i hope you enjoyed that and see you later